Well, this wasn't expected. Rocket, who's a bull snake, female, hypoalbino, one of our holdbacks from a while ago, wasn't paired with any males because she's honestly too small to breed, in our opinion, decided to lay some eggs. What the heck? How did you do that? We are calling this her Jesus Clutch, and a few of these eggs actually look fertile. Look at that. There's actually one from yesterday that also looks pretty good, so we're gonna throw them all into incubation and see if they hatch, I suppose. What is this magic? How did you do this? What a weird day today. This morning, our shop got broken into. That's a whole different video. And then, while the doors were getting fixed, we discovered our bull snake had Jesus eggs. So, I wasn't gonna make a video about this, but I kinda do. I kinda wanna let you guys know that we have a female unpaired bull snake that laid what looked like fertile eggs. So, I guess, let's put them in an incubation tray? And you'll have to excuse the mess. Just yesterday, late last night, we were filming the baby ball python, so I was gonna clean all this up today while I was here, but plans changed. This is actually our ball python incubation tray. I just cleaned it out, and now we're gonna use it, I guess, for some bull snakes. Here's the egg that she laid yesterday, by the way. It also looks good, you know? So in, our, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, in order to tell if an, a snake egg is good or bad or fertilized or unfertilized, you can tell just pretty easily visually. A good egg will be white and round, and a bad egg or unfertilized egg will be kind of yellowish, and it'll be like really squishy, and it usually has pointed ends like this one does. So looking at this entire clutch, now that she's laid them all, we've got one, two, three, four-ish maybe good eggs. This one's dented in because she laid it a few days ago, and so it just started drying out, but I think we can salvage that. I'll show you a trick we have for slightly dried out eggs. And she had one, two, three, four, five, six slugs. But again, she was wasn't paired, so I don't know how this happened, but they look convincingly healthy and good and fertile. It's just so bizarre. But you know what? Life finds a way somehow, and I really hope these hatch. That would be super cool. We're going to talk about what these could hatch into, if they do, in a little bit. But first, we're going to put them into incubation. I have perlite here in the same tray we just had those ball pythons hatch from. Going to mix in some dechlorinated water. Okay, we've mixed it up so that when you take a clump and you squeeze it, it doesn't drip underneath, but it also maintains its shape. So we've got a good ratio of perlite to water there. Now we're going to make little indents for all of the eggs. One, two, actually these two were attached, so I'm gonna actually leave them attached, I think. We'll put them right here. There's two. I'm being careful to make sure they maintain their orientation, or at least the one that was laid a couple days ago, because by now the embryo will have already attached to the side, or the top or the bottom, usually the side of the egg. And at this point you don't want to rotate it because the embryo might drown. So we're going to put them in there. They usually do that within the first 24 hours though, so these eggs which were laid overnight should be safe to like roll around. I'm not going to, just to be safe, but you know what, you probably could and you'd be fine. I'm going to take off that sluggy egg. Toss it back in there. And this last good egg, which is green by the way, because of the moss we put under her hide for her to like, to encourage her to lay the, all the eggs and it worked. Uh, the moss I think got her back into laying mode. She got them all out, which was great. And we're just gonna tuck these in for the night. All right, got all of our eggs. Now, in case the incubator were to, I don't know, fall over and all the eggs were to spill out. Probably not gonna happen, hasn't happened to us before, but you never know, I have heard horror stories. We're going to take a Sharpie, a black Sharpie, and mark the uppermost side or part of the egg so that we know which way to reorient them if something like that were to happen. And what we like to do here at Snake Discovery, in case you don't already know this, is instead of writing just an X on top, I mean, that's kind of boring, we do maybe little designs or pictures. We do a different theme for the eggs for for each clutch. And given the situation here, I think we have to do, don't get mad at me folks, please don't get mad at me. We're gonna do a Jesus theme for these eggs. Okay, Haley and Julie are now with me because I felt lonely doing this video by myself and they are gonna help with the drawing on these eggs with our, again, don't get mad at us, we're gonna do a Jesus theme because these are a miracle, uh, this is a miracle clutch. So what do you guys think I should do first? We're gonna go back and forth. Should I do the fish? The fish. Yeah, yeah do Jesus the fish. fish. Okay. Standard. Okay, standard, yeah, we'll start with something easy. Top most part of the egg. Ta-da! Fish! Okay, there we go. Who wants to go next? Yes, I'll go. <laughs> okay, Julie is gonna go next. You should do the dove. Dove? Yeah, dove. Yeah. Oh gosh. That'd be, that, that would fit with the clutch. All right, so... And since you have, you have doves, right? I do have doves. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Okay, so we're gonna do the beak and the head, the tail. Oh my gosh, that looks great! Is that, that good? Yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. You can totally tell it's a dove. Yay! Nice! Nice! Okay, uh, and Haley said they didn't want to draw on an egg, but I'm gonna hand the marker over. You're gonna do an egg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm glad I stole the fish. I stole the easy one. <laughs> and you get a mossy... 
rose colored <laughs> egg, Sweet. green egg. Okay, um, I guess we'll do the, the water to wine. Does that sound? Oh yeah. Sure, the, yeah. The wine goblet. Beautiful, yeah. nice. And I think we're not gonna draw on that one just because we it's too crumpled in. Instead, we're gonna try to resurrect it with that trick I was mentioning earlier. Okay, for this last remaining egg here, which we're gonna zoom in on, this egg needs a little bit of help because it was sitting for a couple of days before it was noticed hidden under a cave. And that's what told us she was in the process of laying. So thankfully she laid the rest. But this one is gonna need a little bit of help. It's getting a little bit dehydrated and you can tell because it's starting to crumple in. So a nice trick is to actually just take a paper towel Owl. We're gonna fold it a little bit. I'm gonna slightly dunk it in some dechlorinated water. And now we're gonna take this paper towel shroud and just lay it right on top of the egg. And hopefully that will help it. Maybe we'll check that one in three days and see what's happened. And with that, we put on our lid. Oh, these are not ball python eggs anymore. Those have since hatched. Now these are, oh, I shouldn't just write bull snake. Rocket crossed with Rocket. Oops, that's an upside down T. Rocket and Rocket were the parents and maybe some Jesus influence. We don't really know. But now into, oh wait, date. 420 today. <laughs> All right, into the incubator. Do, 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 do. The baby ball pythons literally came out of this incubator yesterday. And now this container is going right back in with our miracle baby eggs. While we're here, have the mangroves tipped? Nope. No pips yet on those. One of those actually looks like it's going bad. Now, I want to double check something about their mom. Okay, this is the bull snake breeding list for this year where I marked down all the pairings and all the confirmed locks that we saw. Shakira, Diarrhea, Jane, Brad, Hannah, Priscilla, Monroe dotted. No, she, Rocket, is not on our pairing list this year. So now there's only one more thing to check. Could she have been accidentally brewmated with a male? Uh, oh. No? Okay, Rocket was with Priscilla and Shakira over winter, over brumation, so she was not brumated with a male either, nor was she paired with a male. So that means you did this all on your, uh, oh, there's another one. You popped another one out. Oh my goodness. Well, too bad it's not good. That's another bouncy, sluggy egg, infertile. But, oh my gosh, it's okay. Come here, girl. Yeah, are you empty? You've gotta be empty now. Yeah, I don't feel anything else in you. Okay, we're empty, finally. Now we have some talking to do, girl. Okay, I, we have never encountered this before, a snake laying eggs, fertile eggs at that, without being paired with a male at any point. This is a virgin female bull snake. We produced this girl and raised her from a baby, so we know she has not been paired with a male. So I don't know how she produced those eggs, but now we're just gonna have to wait it out. Hopefully the eggs like develop and there is a chance they could go bad right away and maybe they were infertile after all, but they look pretty good to me. So we're gonna incubate until there's no debate as always and just see what happens. If they do hatch, I'm really curious to see what they look like because if this is an instance of parthenogenesis or a female produce reproducing without a male present, then I would assume the babies would look just like her. She is a hypo albino and I would assume all of her babies, if they came from just her, her would look just like her too. So I don't know what to expect or what to predict. If anybody has an, a, a hypothesis, let me know in the comments below. It's crazy though that she had so many infertile eggs, so many slugs, but then she still had four, one, two, four, yeah, four good eggs. That, I don't know what to expect. This is gonna be kind of fun, won't it? What did you do? How did you make those babies? Or are those eggs, are there babies in there? We don't know, so I guess we're just gonna wait it out and see what happens. So give us like 55, 60 days and we will hopefully know the results of her miracle clutch. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support. Another fun thing about this snake is this is another one of our holdbacks that we are now breeding for the first time. So it's really cool. This is a really pretty bull snake. We noticed it right away when it hatched how pretty it was. She has her own hatching video. She is in a hatching video from way back in the day. So if you want, feel free to take a look at that. She hasn't changed much as far as her appearance goes. She has some really cool oranges and peaches and yellows and even reds in her scales. And they're all kind of modeled. Like the camera, I'm looking at the preview screen on the camera and this looks exactly like how she does in real life. She's a really pretty bull snake. So I, for her sake, 
do hope that her babies hatch and are just as beautiful as she is. So we're gonna see what happens. Wish us luck and we'll see you next time. <laughs> By the way, I am not religious myself and I hope I didn't say anything offensive in that video. If I did, I am so sorry. It was unintentional, but I am still very much looking forward to this miracle clutch. Wait, before we wrap up this video, I just realized we have good food here for some of our animals, including Allie is one of them. Do you want an egg? Look at that. Is that a snaky egg? Do you want to eat it? Here you go. Oh, terrible eater. At its finest, there you go. Get it, you got a piece of grass. There you go, nice. Allie won't let these eggs go to waste, that's for sure. Are you gonna, don't pop it. Just swallow it whole, please. Please don't pop it. I'm kind of concerned with how much chewing you're doing. Swallow it, swallow it. It's a tasty snake egg. She's playing around with it like it's a toy. Like it's a little water balloon that she's just gumming right now. Are you gonna actually swallow the thing? Or are you just gonna play with it the entire time? Well, it's keeping her occupied, so we'll call it a win. It's enrichment. Oh, there it goes. Nice. Oh, I gotta lick those lips. Oh, that was a tasty treat. Did you like it? You're gonna try to find more? Only one, sorry. And then we're gonna give one of these slug eggs to our blue-tailed monitor who we have officially named Dennis the Menace. Dennis is doing great. He is an awesome addition to our zoo. I don't know how I'm gonna get this in here though without, yep, freaking him out. Okay, we're gonna put it here and we'll see if he comes and grabs it. Well, Dennis decided he did not want to eat the egg. He just ran away. I think he's gonna want it though once he finds it. So I'm just gonna leave it there on his favorite basking ledge, and it'll be a nice little surprise when he comes back. Okay, now goodbye, everyone.